So we know that Jesus Christ, of course, is the Son of God. He claimed to be the Son of God. We see that all throughout the Scriptures, the Son of God. Now, there's many different aspects to Jesus being the Son of God. There's, there's, there's a lot of, of meaning behind that. It's not any one thing necessarily. We're going to get to that a little bit more when I get to the word begotten. He's the only begotten of the Father. He's the first begotten. There's different ways that he is begotten. So one way you could say is he was physically born into this world through Mary. Right? That is one way or one reason why he's the son of God, because physically he had a mother of Mary who carried him as he grew in the womb as a human being. But his father was God. So being the son of God, he was the son of, uh, of God. Like li literally in a physical sense, that's how he came to be when he walked this earth. But that wasn't his origin. That wasn't Jesus Christ's beginning. He's been around all through, from everlasting and to everlasting. He's also was begotten by, and we're going to get to this in a minute too, begotten when he was begotten again from the dead. So when he's at his resurrection is another time he's talked about as being begotten of the Father. And then um, I believe, and I'm going to teach, that eternally Jesus has always been the Son of God. That he didn't only become the Son of God when he came into human form on this earth. I believe he was always the Son of God That in the Trinity. Because we believe here in the Trinity that uh, the Bible says in 1 John 5, 7 that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and that these three are one. We believe that here. There's three persons in the Godhead. And when I say persons, I mean persons, and persons in the sense that they have wills, which is evident where Jesus says, not my will be done, but thy will be done. And he's expressing two different wills in um, also in the sense that there are uh, there's a power structure in the sense of, well, Jesus submitting himself unto the Father, right? We see that all throughout Scripture, that there is a structure. We see when Jesus Christ comes and rules and reigns, all power and authority is going to be given unto him for the thousand years that he reigns, and then he's going to give authority back to the Father, and, and you can't have this without having persons. However, while there are three persons, there is still one God. And those three the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are one, and they're one God. We believe they're one in essence, they're one in their being as far as being a God. But there are three persons to the Godhead. Now, it is important to understand this, that the, the characteristics that we understand about the Godhead, that the, the, between the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the Father have always been the way that they are now, that it's not like there was some change just because Jesus came into this world physically uh, through Mary. Galatians 4, we're gonna, I'm going to prove this to you from Scripture. Like I said, everything that I teach or preach, I'm going to try to, my best to prove to you with the most clear Scriptures that we have. And this is an important doctrine because this has to do with who God is. It has to do with who Jesus is, who God is, and just this aspect. Because with the heresy that's being taught now, this oneness that there's one God and his name is Jesus, and, and it completely just denies the three persons of the Godhead, teaches that Jesus was not always the Son of God going into eternity past. That it was some new thing that like Jesus was just came, almost came into being. I mean, depending on who you're talking about, what they believe, it, it's, it gets kind of weird, but it, but it really is like this, all of a sudden now he's the Son of God and it's just because he was physically born. 